Hi there, this is Saul Chironin from Saul Chironin Films and welcome to another random review. Today's random review is Body Parts from 1991 directed by Eric Red, starring Jeff A, Kim Delaney, Brad Dourif and Lindsay Duncan. This is an imprint release with lots of lovely extras even though I think this also has a Scream Factory release because um, a lot of the extras are done by Shout Factory. Um, this is a film I remember at the time when it came out but I don't think I ever actually saw it um, and seeing it again 30 years later it's a wonderful little genre film which starts as a psychological thriller and then ups the the gore elements and the horror elements. It's only 88 minutes long, doesn't need to be any longer. Um, it's just a wonderful tight little film. Um, like I said, directed by Eric Red, who wrote The Hitcher in Near Dark. He also directed Conan Tate um, and then made this film. He's made Bad Moon which is a little werewolf film as well. But he's kind of... didn't perhaps have the career that he could have had. Um, this was made for $10 million. Only made $9 million. But as he says in the extras, um, the film came out at exactly the same time that the revelations about Jeffrey Dahmer came out, um, who obviously had lots of body parts and barrels. And for some reason, the publicity was pulled from the Milwaukee area in Wisconsin, um, where Dahmer did his business. So the film ended up getting somehow associated with Jeffrey Dahmer. And because it was called Body Parts, um, that was perhaps one of the reasons why it didn't have the success that it maybe should have. Obviously, it grew legs um, in the video market. Um, but hopefully it'll get a bit more love now that Imprint have released this wonderful edition. Um, the special feature is a 1080 transfer. There's an audio commentary by Eric Red. There's an audio commentary by Lee Gambin, who does quite a lot of good commentary work. This is from 2021. And then his interview with director Eric Red, which is at least about 45 minutes long. And um, there's an interview with the editor, Anthony Redman. An interview with the actor... Um, Paul Ben Victor, who you'll recognise the face, perhaps not the name. An interview with actor Peter Murnick, again you'll probably recognise the face if not the name. Um, and there's the two deleted scenes which Eric Red talks about in detail in the interview. And they have an optional commentary with Eric Red and there's also a trailer. So it's packed with good stuff. Again, Eric Red's um, interview is really fascinating as he charts his beginnings of his career um, and how he really really got started because he's another one of those guys that never went to film school made a short film wrote The Hitcher and that kind of got him started um, it's a fascinating um, really in-depth interview with Eric Red but the story itself stars Jeff Fay, who if you visited video shops he was in a lot of um, straight to video erotic thrillers and thrillers in general. He's one of those probably C list actors um, that perhaps perhaps had the kind of look of a movie star, but perhaps not the chops of a, of a movie star. Um, even though he's really good in this with his nineties mullet, um, and he stars as a psychiatrist or a criminal psychologist who is interviewing um, a murderer who's on death row as you can tell because he has a, a little tattoo in his arm I believe it says striker 
um, which all death mate, death row inmates get, um, and you know he's trying to get into the mind of a killer, and then he's going to his work one morning. He's involved in a car accident. He gets slammed through his windshield and up in the air, um, and his arm is torn off. His wife is told by Dr. Webb, played by Lindsay Duncan, who is fantastic, um, that he will survive, but his arm won't. In the deleted scenes, you see why his um, arm can't just be sewn back on. And Dr. Webb has this revolutionary surgery that she'll be able to not put a prosthetic arm on his body, but an arm from somebody else. Um, this film has it's a bit of Frankenstein, it's a bit of The Hands of Orlac, Mad Love, The Hand. Um, it has that kind of lineage. Um, it was shot in Toronto, which has a kind of mix of gothic old world buildings and kind of brand new modern futuristic looking buildings. So it's a mix of the old and the new in the storytelling and the story itself. Um, the story was actually inspired by the same um, writer who wrote La Diabolique. Um, Eric Red was a fan of La Diabolique, so he looked for the other books by the author, and this was a story um, about a man who gets the arm um, of a murderer um, and it's about five people who get the body parts of murderers in the film it's three people who get body parts of a murderer and then people start dying obviously um, but what Eric Red didn't realise that apparently this was in Hollywood development this story for about 25 years apparently Hitchcock tried to get it made as well but that never came to fruition so Eric read, kind of went, I've yeah, read this book, it's fantastic, this wonderful original idea, and apparently it had been in Hollywood development hell for 25 years. Um, so Jeff A starts having nightmares, um, so he gets his fingerprint of his replaced arm tested, um, and it turns out that he is, he's got the arm of a murderer in general, um, POS, as we say in the business, um, and his behaviour starts to change. There's a wonderful scene when he gets home and he's showing the children his arm with the, all the scars. Um, at one point he um, tries to strangle his wife. He's playing with his kid, um, his son, and punches his son in the face, which is um, quite amusing. Not that I condone punching children in the face, obviously. Um, so he, he realises something's not quite right here. So he tries to track down the other people who got limbs. So one of them um, is an ex-basketball star. Um, certainly at the college level, I believe. Not the pros. Um, who lost, had both his legs crushed in an industrial accident, so he got the killer's legs. Um, and Brad Dourif, the wonderful Brad Dourif, plays a painter who, as he says, made paintings for doctor's offices, but then once he got the arm, he again was inspired and pretty much has had the same visions that Jeff Hayes had, but he's actually managed to do these nightmarish, ghoulish type paintings, but as he says, it's the best kind of work of his career, work of his life. So he's quite happy, because he's now got all this excellent work to do. Um, the guy with the legs, again, is cynical. There's a great scene where he's sitting at traffic lights and the leg hits the accelerator and almost causes a multiple vehicular crash and Jeff A is trying to convince 
everybody that there's something wrong. He wants rid of the arm. He goes to Dr. Webb and Lindsay Duncan, who's usually um, plays nice characters. She's fantastic as the kind of ice queen doctor, because Eric Red said kind of mad scientist doctors are always men, are always men. So he wanted to make um, this doctor female. And she's absolutely fantastic as she says, you know, Jeff Fahey's pain doesn't matter in comparison to this groundbreaking surgery that she's done. Um, but also then people, the two guys, people start turning up dead as the limbs are reclaimed by somebody. Um, and the action ramps up and the film gets a lot gorier um, and there's a there's a wonderful car chase um, Zeke's Mokai turns up as a um, detective who's trying to figure it out as well it's just a fantastic little genre film it was one of those films that you know when I picked it up I was like yeah this will probably be a three star at best but I actually gave it four stars out of five because it's just so much fun. Again, it's a perfect example of a genre film that is tight. Again, 88 minutes. Doesn't need to be any longer. Um, it zips along. Um, and it's just wonderful. It almost, you know, again, like I say, it kind of starts off as a psychological thriller as Faye's struggling with what he's seeing in his dreams, his relationship to his kids and his wife changes. He eventually has to, he moves out for their own kind of safety. Um, there's a wonderful scene when the three um, recipients of the killer's body parts are in a bar and Faye, of course, is trying to figure it all out psychologically and philosophically and almost gets into Cronenberg territory when he's discussing, you know, the nature of evil and where does evil come from? Is it in the soul or is it actually in the flesh? Um, so that's a, that's a wonderful little almost Cronenbergian kind of nuance there. Where is evil? Where does it actually live in the body physically? Um, or is it just mental? Um, it's just a wonderful little film, looks fantastic. Like I say, the extras on this imprint release are absolutely wonderful. Again, I do love listening to directors who you think whatever happened to them and kind of Eric Red is a bit like that. He's directed some films later on, but again, not a lot of films. And his discussion about the development process and his journey early on in his career um, and the making of the film is really quite wonderful. Um, so it's another really good release from Imprint, spine number 89, if anybody's counting at home. But just, again, this is not a film about rocket science. It's a film about advanced surgery. Um, but it shows you what you can do when you've got a tight script, tightly shot, characters that you're interested in, um, so even if it's a genre film, you can still do really good genre films. I know really good genre films are now few and far between because nobody can seem to do them properly. Um, but I think Body Parts is a good example of doing a genre film properly. Um, the effects are really good. They still will hold up today. Um, it's just a wonderful little film that you don't need to think too much about. So thanks very much for watching this random review. Please let me know if you've seen Body Parts and what you think of it. And hopefully join me again for more random reviews. This is Solid Your Own from Solid Your Own Films. Say farewell.